Thank you very much. I think this is working. Yes, you can hear me. I prefer to, not that I used to be on stage, but I prefer to walk a little bit so I don't get too nervous. I was very happy with the last presentation because that is somehow turned us to cities that are doing what they're not supposed to do. Exactly as, as Edgar was saying that he was supposed to do a lot health-wise. He's not doing it and he's feeling quite good. And uh, the last presentation, he appears to at least, the last presentation was somehow living up to that. People are doing something that they're not supposed to do. And uh, I have worked now for almost 30 years in Africa. I lived 10 years in Mozambique. I still live there. And uh, I have done research and have done activism and have been worked in, in been working in the, in the formal system. And uh, I've been working with the city of Maputo, which has somehow 2.5 million inhabitants. Maputo is in the background. And this is the Maputo that you, if you visit Maputo, this is where you come, people like you. You never go here. But here, two million people are living. So for me, this is the city. This is Maputo. This is Maputo. This is, this is just downtown. Now, and most live in informal settlements. And what is very surprisingly, and which is quite different to other developing countries, is that in the case of Mozambique, people have a very high sense of security of tenure. And that means that they invest in their homes. This is not the case in, in the neighboring countries. This is not the case in South Africa, where Edgar will be speaking about. This is not the case in Ghana, where I'll be working. Here, people, they feel secure. They invest in their homes. What does that mean? It, that, it means that these are not shacks. These are homes. People do not consider this as slums. Another thing is that these people are urban people. Some of them may have come from the rural areas, but they are urban people and they are there to stay. But still, certainly many problems, certainly. Sanitation, a huge problem. Water provision, a huge problem. In the case of Mozambique, many, many uh, households are female-headed as many men are migrants working in when Zimbabwe was doing good in Zimbabwe, now in South Africa. Now this is an unplanned settlement, an informal settlement. It is not, in my perception, it is not a slum. In 2003, the UN Habitat issued the challenge of slums, introducing five indicators. Due to those indicators, this is a slum. I think this is, stig this is uh, stigma stigmatizing these inhabitants. These are not slum dwellers. These are city builders. These are homemakers. These people are building their homes each and every day, all in permanent materials. I repeat, it is not shacks. Water provision, uh, standpipes, or individual, some few individual connections. But, and this is a huge problem, there's no sewer. So these people all have pit latrines. A pit latrine, as you may know, basically is a hole in the ground, as simple as that. It does create uh, uh, health problems, but basically it works. Some also have uh, septic tanks. All have electricity, but drainage is very poor. There are very few schools. There are very few health institutions. But as you see on the plots, people have trees. People are nursing their homes. They are nursing their plots. But when you go down and you go into, this is what it looks like. When I come there, I live in this kind of, 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 of settlements when I do my research in Maputo. This, this, is, this is my access to my, to my place. Very few roads, you cannot, you cannot reach it by car. Some you can reach by car, some you cannot. 
public spaces are few, and some houses you have to cross the neighbor's plot, meaning that there must be some social uh, negotiations, otherwise it can't work. Surprisingly enough, maybe to some of you, it works. It was not supposed to work, but it works. Water provision, many people are making small businesses selling water. This young man here, he has a water connection with a, with a, with a city supplier and he is then selling water as a small business. And it's much cheaper to wash your car in the rich area than to buy the water here for cooking. The unit prices in the informal settlements are much higher because many people resell so they make a small profit. So this is the pit latrine. This is the so-called improved pit latrine. And that is actually a success story. It was introduced in the early 80s by the UN and uh, there are now hundreds of thousands of these improved pit latrines in the entire country in Mozambique. It's simply a slap. It's a very simple technology without uh, ferro in, in Portuguese. Ferro, what is ferro? Iron. It's not reinforced. It's not reinforced. It's, it's, it's pits like this. So it can sust sustain the weight of, of, of people. So if you again go down, how, how do people survive? We heard that this morning also. And I, I think it's very important to say this is, this, this is, these are housing areas for ordinary people, for civil servants in ties. They come, they're clean, they have nice shoes, they come to work, they sit on their computers, but they live here. Because two million people are living like that. And the 500,000 500, in the city could not survive without these two million people. But still, many, of course, they work in the informal sector. Many are engaged in petty trade, and as we also heard, the food preparation is very normal, executed by women. And many do survive simply by reselling food. And of course, as you can imagine, this was not grown by this woman here. She bought it, and then she's reselling, so the profit is absolutely minimal. Absolutely minimal. And the same here. These are secondhand from Europe. This is probably from Denmark or from England. So they're just reselling. So it doesn't create places of employment. And places of employment is a huge problem. I think estimates are not very reliable, but something like 60% are unemployed in this kind of unplanned settlement. Then when you go into the courtyards, this is a private domain, which is very important for people, because this is, this is here where you have your bathroom, your toilet, and in some few cases, you may even have, have chickens, and this is, this is where you, you wash your dishes. This is a, a private, very, very important uh, domain, very much controlled by the women, and to some extent, certainly the children that are there during the daytime. If you go into the houses, of course, they vary a lot. Crowding is not, overcrowding is not an issue. We have made some surveys saying that there's somehow like six people at an average living in, in houses like this. But, of course, these spaces are very multifunctional, so they use it for cooking, for storage, and at times for sleeping. And this is something that we quite often forget about that women and children, they are exposed to, to, to smoke, which is a very, very serious problem. Very serious problem. And charcoal is used throughout. It is also an environmental problem. Somebody has calculated the number of trucks coming in with charcoal each and every day. Huge trucks with charcoal. You, you can imagine that many people cooking every day Okay, I have to speed up. An environmental, serious environmental problem. And they have to go further and further and further to get that charcoal. Forests are being cut down. And we have problems with the location of these ones on close to landfills. I have to speed up now. Now on to, to some few minutes on 
what we did in the 80s. This is how it is. Now, when I came in, in the early 80s to Mozambique, and it was very, Mozambique was very much the kind of the, a, a darling in the developing world, we can do it. We can, yes, we can, as Obama said. We said that in the early 80s in, in, in Mozambique. The president said, a loser continua. He did not say, yes, we can. He said, a loser continua, which means the fight continues. The fight for a better life. I was young. I thought I can make it. And we started to say, we are not touching the informal settlements. This is too complicated. So we go out ahead of, to be ahead of urbanization. What is happening out there at the outskirts? In order to avoid the creation of informal settlements, which is a, this is a future informal settlement being created here. So we started to lay out here small plots and a very, very simple diagram of what we did, 50 by 50 meters blocks with eight plots, all 12 by 50 by 25 meters. And then we were leaving out a block in the middle which was supposed to be for water provision. I'm speeding up now. Now this is 25 years later. It looks like this. Most, all buildings have been built. All in, and, and what, what we lost were some of the land reserves. I mean, land grabbing is there all over, even in my own country. But in this part of the world, land grabbing is a serious problem. So some of the, in the layout, you saw the layouts with the blocks. Now when you see these blocks, most of them have, uh, are not there. They've been stolen. Chuk, 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 sold, money. Water provision, private providers, no sewer, continuous no sewer, but you have the possibility later on to, make, to provide the sewer, no drainage, but the roads are there, mini buses, some schools have been built, very few uh, uh, institutions, and still serious problem, employment. Now, that was ahead of urbanization. Now, over the last two years, I have been going back into the informal settlements, trying to see what can we do in an area like this. We did this based on that the existing residents should be able to stay on. We, were not, we will not bulldoze out the existing residents. It, we would provide access, we would widen a little bit the streets, in order to also later on be able to, to improve the, the drainage and, the, and eventually put in sewer and some few public open spaces. But here you see, this, this, there are plots here. Uh, this one has access there, but there are plots somewhere. This, yeah, this one actually, no, I can't find. But there are plots here where you have to cross another plot in order to access it. Now, what, what, what did we do? We kind of... Did you get that? We're actually acknowledging this. We are widening a little bit the streets. And then the design itself is not a road. All road engineers, they know when they, when they design a road, it should be like this. We did the opposite. It was very, very difficult to convince the engineers that it could work. At the end, we succeeded. Now, we lost. We lost, it was politically put down. This is the proposal, as it is now. It will all, all, which is like this, in here, it shall all be demolished, and the private sector shall come in and do the dirty work. But that's a good story. Political local resisting is building up, a little bit supported by me and it's on hold. Now, I'm over time. We have to be ahead in a country like Mozambique, in any developing country, I assume. We have to be ahead on the informal urbanization process. Otherwise, we need to go back and do repair work. This is very expensive. So we have to do it before. Otherwise, we must be surgeons. And it must be based on very simple layouts, 
not fancy smart ideas, simple layouts that can, can be simply uh, implemented. And it must be based on local involvement. If you don't have local involvement, if you have resistance locally, forget about it. Now, the upgrading exercises is very much a political issue. It's all depending on where the land is located. In the case where we presently may succeed, may not succeed, have difficulties, is well located, and this is the reason that it has become a very hot political issue. But what is most often the problem with upgrading activities is that what do we do with this, the excess population, where to put them? Normally you see in documents you say in appropriate sites that the residents agree upon. But you can never ever find appropriate sites. You can never ever find them. They are always 10 or 15 or 20 kilometers out there. 20, 25, no transport, no nothing. So this is a really, really problem. We have been fighting with the World Bank in order to get funds to buy land to relocate this population. They keep on saying no. This is not part, this is a national issue. It must be solved by the, by the national government. Thank you very much.